Welcome back to the GSMC Chip Shot Football Podcast, rolling right along into the next segment. The Green Bay Packers and Lambeau Field, a historical site, a very big attraction for the city of Green Bay, Wisconsin, bringing in a lot of people, not just in Wisconsin, but around the state of Wisconsin. People come to see the games. It's a very big venue, a very big attraction for the entire state to have not only a massive team in the NFL with all of its history, but now them starting to trend in a positive direction. Bringing in all those people is great. But on top of just football and this team that it holds their home games here, obviously. The Packers want to expand it a little bit more, want to broaden their horizons and bring in college football games, soccer games, other events outside of sports to be hosted here. Because it's such a rich tradition here, they think they could grow it even more by bringing in extra curricular events here to the stadium. I'm all for it. I agree with them. But because the stadium, the Packers aren't, owned by one group, one person, they have to ask almost like for permission, for money, funds to to get this sort of project going. They want to build a third locker room at Lambeau Field in order to attract, like I mentioned, college football games, pro soccer games, and other events like that. You might be asking, why can't they just use one of their two locker rooms? What's wrong with that? Well, The Packers don't actually allow the use of their home locker room to non-Packer related teams, players that come in only for one game, one event, um, because they have it open for all of their players year round usually, so they don't want to move things around or, I guess, accommodate other people. Um, It sounds bad, uh, honestly, reading it out loud, but that's, that's what they do. That's one of their rules. That's one of their procedures. They don't allow people in their home locker room so they want to build a third one and it's not out of the ordinary by any means a bunch of other teams already have not just three locker rooms but they have a lot more um obviously the newer ones have a lot more sofi has i think about five or seven locker rooms medlife has four locker rooms hard rock stadium down in miami they have three atlanta has four at their stadium the the chicago bears I read today are also trying to renovate their stadium. I'm sure they're going to have multiple locker rooms or more than two at their stadium to host more events. The Cleveland Browns is another one. They're in the mix of trying to figure out a new stadium, a new location close to their stadium. All these new stadiums are bringing in a lot more people to come check it out, check out everything they have in their um, new buildings that they have. And it definitely attracts more because you see Atlanta always hosting one of the college football playoff games. SoFi is always in the conversation for something going on there. MetLife is hosting the final of the World Cup in a few years. It definitely makes an impact. It definitely makes a difference to have this. And the Packers see it this way, but they still have to ask for permission, like I mentioned. And the Packers have asked the Green Bay, Brown County Pro Football Stadium District for about... $3 $3 million from its capital improvement fund to help pay for the $5 million project that they're planning on building with this new locker room. The money in that fund, it's important to point out that it can be used for only projects at the stadium. So they have this fund for these sort of projects, usually for any renovations or stuff they want to do to their stadium and the fund again it's important to point out that the fund isn't tax money they don't collect it from people in that area it's built up through user fees from game tickets and it's saved from projects or for projects like this the board's executive director said that there was about 6.5 million dollars currently in that fund and just to keep it safe as a precaution they never ever let it drop below $2 $2 million in that fund. So there is room if they want to provide that to the Green Bay Packers for this um, project that they want to do. But there is some doubts right now. They had a vote on it, actually, to have the Packers provide the information, the project that they want to have built. And the board voted 6-1 to one to hold off on the 
project on the matter until their next meeting in June to hope to gather more information on the topic, how many other NFL stadiums have this, what the benefits are, how much can it really benefit them long term. And that's where the doubts sort of fall in for the board that I've read up on and kind of gathered here. Some of the biggest doubts that the board has to provide these funds to the Packers is that Green Bay should be having about one event um, other than just football games there per year. But right now they're averaging about one every four years. So that stat as it is, they're trying to project how much adding just one more locker room will change that. They're kind of on the fence of really believing if that one locker room will change it that drastically because it is at a very low rate right now when I wrote it down. So that is pretty surprising, and it is a valid doubt to have because already it's not looking good how much will another locker room really change. Also, it seems like a lot of money for a locker room that will be used only a handful of times over the next decade, which, again, is another... It kind of relates back to that first part for using... $3 $3 million from that fund and the Packers providing that other $2 million. It is a good amount of money for that locker room. Obviously, they want to make it pristine and nice and have everything that other people, other teams might need. But it does, when you're using this sort of money, you definitely want to see what kind of compensation you're getting back for providing, using all of this money on this project. You want to get a lot back. And right now, the board is indecisive on how much really the Packers can provide back for them over the next few years, decade, if they provide this for the fund, because they'd be essentially cutting the fund in half. I mentioned they were at six and a half. If they use three, obviously it brings them down very close to that limit that they have. So they want to avoid any potential of getting below that. That's a big concern for them. And this money go is going towards something else to benefit other parts. It could go to other things around the stadium that could potentially benefit more to the Packers around the stadium. That was another point that was brought up by one of the board members. Does it have to be a locker room? Could it go somewhere else? Probably renovating a different part of the stadium or um, trying to build another thing that's not a locker room. That's another suggestion that one of the board members has. So those three sort of topics right now are the biggest doubts for the board and it does raise questions and of course it is something to to consider because it is important from this point that it is a lot of money the board doesn't really want to waste too much of it if it doesn't give them anything back and the Green Bay Public Affair Director Aaron Popke said that because they only have two locker rooms right now and they do hold certain events limited not that many compared to SoFi or any other stadiums I mentioned because they only have those two they're forced to convert their locker room that they have in the facility into a temporary excuse me into a temporary locker room and change everything around and have a lot of manpower change that into looking like a locker room temporary then putting everything back and it's a big process it's not simply just changing, moving a few things and making it look like a locker room. I'm sure they have to bring in all sorts of equipment to move huge machines around um, in a professional football gym. It is a lot of work to be doing this constantly, and the Packers don't really want to keep doing that, in all honesty, and trying to build this new locker room, trying to get it to work. The public Affair director Aaron Popke said that the gym also won't be available going forward. So without a third permanent locker room, the team might have to build a temporary one outside of the stadium, which if you're talking about saving money, investing this money into the most reliable thing that could get you something back, building a temporary locker room is definitely not that. It's a big waste of money because now they can't use the gym going forward. And if you build a temporary one, it's not going to stick around, obviously, for that long. You use all that money for it to just last you maybe a year or two. It's not sensible to do that either. So they're right now at a crossroads to try and determine where 
this whole situation can go from here. They don't want to waste that money, and they don't want to continue to push the board if they're not going anywhere. Because the funny thing is about all of this, the Packers or Popke, their public affairs director, told Fox 2 that the project can actually be done. It can be completed without the funds from the stadium, but they're in the mindset, they're feeling like, why have that fund if you're not going to provide it for a project like this? They feel like adding a third locker room, a renovation to their stadium, in addition to their stadium, on a topic that they feel very strongly about is perfectly in line with what this fund is there to do. And by the board not providing it, they're just left confused as to why uh, they can't get this money um, from them to help them out a little bit. But again, they can do this project without that fund, but they'd just be left a little bit bitter about it. Um, in all honesty, saying that, if you look back, just to wrap it up a little bit and talk about what events were held there, what sort of attractions the Packers bring in with this um, temporary setup at Lambo with two locker rooms. They usually convert the gym, like I mentioned, and the last event that they held there was the Wisconsin LSU game in 2016 for something else outside of professional football. The other event that they held outside of football in general is in 2022 when Bayern Munich played Man City there. A soccer game, an exhibition game was played there. So you kind of get something coming in a little bit from other sports, other sort of football, other types of football like college football. But again, you don't see it as often as all the other stadiums. And that's what Green Bay really wants to get to. Their next scheduled event is college football, but that's not set until 2026, September 5th, when Wisconsin will be playing Notre Dame there. And again, Popke really believes, really stresses that this new addition would allow them the chance to host games even before then. That's a lot of time, two years, two and a half years from this point to, to until 2026. It, there's a lot of opportunity there to host other things, bring in other teams, see that, oh, Lambeau Field is actually a really cool place to come and play and expose a different game, college football atmosphere to a new group of fans. I hope it gets done. I think it makes sense. I didn't know that they didn't have a third locker room already because of how historic that place is. The only downside is, from my personal standpoint, is the weather. The cold, I don't know how many people that attracts compared to Los Angeles inside of SoFi Stadium. Atlanta is warm. Again, another domed stadium. That That's really the only negative for me, why Green Bay might not be the most ideal place, but... You're talking about Lambeau. You're talking about all that history. People are going to want to go there. You want to attract as many people as possible that aren't wimps about it like me, worrying about the cold. But that's how it's going to work out right now. That's how it looks at this moment between the Packers and the board trying to get this done, trying to attract more people to Lambeau and see and learn about their history at Lambeau. I think it's a good idea. We'll see how it all turns out. More to come from that, I'm sure. But we're going to leave it there and mosey on with the show. More stories to come after the break. I'm going to talk about the nine franchise players that I mentioned getting their extensions early, who got it, and who's still left on that list. What we're going to do with those players, I'll reveal that after the break. And we're going to get to that story on Caleb Williams responding to the former NFL player, current analyst, giving him critics about no adversity in his career and how that could affect his professional career and the level of success he can have in the NFL. More details on that shortly. All of that is coming up after this break. I'll be right back. Your daily 